Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. Kind of pointless. We know all things. What up, and welcome back to Boring Reviews. Jody here. Nick, Nick here. here. Oh man. Hey, we sit together though. You, we are assistant. very unified. I know. We're pretty much one and one, you know? Same brain. 16 and years of marriage. Speaking of unified, we are about to watch. <laughs> it's not a very good segue. Pitch meeting, <laughs> baby. And we checked out Home Alone, the, the first Home Alone's pitch meeting around Christmas time before that. And now we are checking out which one? Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. Because you guys kept saying, you got to watch all the Home Alone. So here we are. And if there's a Home Alone want pitch meeting for the fourth or fifth, I'm not watching that nonsense. Sorry. I'm sure it's glorious. And maybe you can convince me elsewise. I'm not trying to say I'm super cool and what blah, 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 But those movies are bad. And maybe you want to watch it because they're so bad. Yeah. Especially the most recent one. I didn't even make it all the way through. My kids were watching when that came out on Netflix or whatever it did. So bad. But this like one is a glorious sequel. Yes, it's very similar to the first one. Yes, there's lots of common things that happen. But it's such a great sequel. They introduce us to the genius of, oh my gosh, like Tim um, Curry. Couldn't think of it. The genius of Tim Curry in this one. You also have a very young, oh, what's his name? Roy Schneider. But mm -hmm. you have Kevin McAllister. You have him in New York. You have Marvin Harry back. It's a great sequel. And I'm excited to see what does he say about it. Because it is, for the most part, well-loved by most fans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not really hated. So true. So true. Except for there's... It says too much. Lots of pitchels. Uh, um, uh, not pitchels. Um, lots of... Um, <laughs> the pitchels are my favorite part. Lots of... I mean, it um, happens like near the end, that one scene, all those pitchels. <laughs> I love it. It's well-planned. Plot holes. Plot holes. I'm just going to say, I'm curious if you're going to talk... plot hole? Plot hole. Oh, okay. <gasps> Didn't I'm know, curious if he's going to mention, A, this has already happened once, so you're not going to double check that everybody's playing yes, that plane. definitely that part. That's going to be, because I don't care what the flight attendant or anybody at the airport are saying. Like, at least oh, they made sure he was well, in the car this time. That's true. But I don't care if they say, we'll make sure if he gets on the flight. Like, as a mother, I'd be like, that's nice. But regardless of this happened or not, even now, I'd be like, I'm just going to make sure my kids get on first, though. Like, Listen. I'm going to respond to But, two, really, you don't, like, sit with your family. Like, the kids are all in coach and you're in first class. You think he wants to sit with his brothers? I'm just saying. No, sisters? the parents sit up front. Oh, yeah. And, but they, at least they make a point of it in the movie. Yes, they you do make like a point. feel like a heel. But, would you, but three, the other thing is, like, we're going to really pick, like, right now to put the batteries in our video camera. I'm just saying. Are you kidding me? An well, eight-year-old, nine-year-old kid? Yes, a kid would do that. But it drives me crazy. But the last thing is, is... The whole hotel thing, when A, the credit card comes back stolen, like, seriously, they better mention, like, what adult is going to be like, you little thief, you little eight, nine, ten an year adult old that thief. hates that kid? <sighs> Listen, I, I agree with everything you're saying. Listen. They are plot holes, okay? Not hoes. Not so much hoes, okay? But they are plot holes, but... I do appreciate, because all these all movies have plot holes, especially sequels. Yes. Especially yes. sequels that want to set it up to be more the same from the first one. But the thing I appreciate about this movie is they at least make an attempt. It's bad when a movie doesn't even make an attempt. Where there's not That's even true. a line of dialogue to That's explain this true. huge thing that the whole elephant in the room that we all see that no one's mentioning. Um, at least they make mention to it. But I, I do agree with you. It's In a real world, it probably wouldn't happen. But the sad thing is, you know this kind of stuff has happened in the real world. That's the sad part. Okay? Yeah. In yeah. a world of over 7, 7 billion, close to 8 billion people. Sad but true, once again. With well, that being said, if you like this video, please go ahead and like it. If please. you just absolutely love us, subscribe. It really does help our channel. And if you're just so, so, so in love with our videos, please hit that notification bell so you're aware of our next uploaded video. Parts right there. All right. Please do hit the subscribe button. It really helps us out a lot. And here we schmo. So, you have a Home Alone sequel script for me? Yes, sir, I do. And it only took me like 20 minutes to put together. How is that possible? <laughs> well, I just took every single story beat and plot point from the first movie and made them all a little more intense or Told elaborate. You. Oh, that's smart, because people liked the first movie. They gave me money to see it. Right, so I figured they'd pay us a bunch of money <laughs> to see it again, but it. different. I love it already. So, how are we kicking things up a notch? Well, instead of being alone at home, this time Kevin is going to be alone in New York 
York City. Oh, New York City is much bigger than a home. I thought so too. <laughs> so how does Kevin end up alone in NYC? Well, the family's planning on heading down to Florida so for Christmas, but the dad accidentally way. unplugs the alarm clock the night oh, before they leave, so they have to rush to the airport again. They have one alarm clock for a house of 14 people, and they don't double check it before bed. That's what we're going with. Stretching that suspension of disbelief real thin. Yes, sir, I am. <laughs> wow. So anyway, everybody's wow. running through the airport, and Kevin tells his dad, hey, dad, I need batteries for my Talkboy recorder thing. So the dad's like, I'll give you the batteries on the plane. We're extremely late, and this is not a priority at all. No, he hands Kevin a bag that has his wallet and some cash it. in it. There's no way oh, anyone would actually do that, yes. though. I know, but this way Kevin will have some spending money in New York. Okay, so we're taking another little break from logic so that can happen. Oh yeah, we're gonna take a lot of those kinds of breaks. I guess we'll have to. <laughs> and so Kevin gets separated from his family and follows someone he thinks is his dad onto the wrong plane. Isn't it hard for him to get past airport employees and security? Actually, super easy. Barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, the airport people just kind of take Kevin's word for it that his dad's on that plane. I didn't realize how laid back airport security was. Yeah, well, it's the early 90s right now, so airport security isn't that much of a concern yet. Fair enough. Vaguely ominous statements about the future are tight. Yeah, I guess that was pretty weird of me. <laughs> so how does Kevin not realize that he's not on the same plane as his family? Well, his mom said that because Love it's it. Christmas time, they couldn't get seats together. They were lucky to even be on the same flight. So how is there an empty seat for him on the New York plane? I don't know. Fair enough. So yeah, then Kevin's gonna get to New York and the fun's gonna That's begin. That's a great wow. point. So what does he do? Oh, before. he's gonna go to a fancy hotel and commit a bunch of credit card fraud and identity theft to get a room. Oh my God. But like in a cute way. Okay, good. Yeah, but this one concierge thinks the whole okay, thing good. is super suspicious. Oh, so he stops Kevin before he goes up to the room. No, later he's gonna sneak into Kevin's room. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. well, he wants to confirm Holy his God. suspicions that That's Kevin true. is alone so in weird. there. So best case scenario in this guy's mind, he's breaking into a child's room and finding that child all alone. Well, it sounds creepy and when you say it like bathroom. that. I think it sounds creepy any way you say it because it's super creepy. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> and what else happens in New York? Oh, well, Kevin's gonna have to deal with some bad guys again. Oh, I guess the city is a perfect place to introduce some wacky new criminals. Well, actually, I was thinking it could be Harry and Marv from the first movie. But weren't they arrested in Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how would that even be possible? Well, they escaped from prison and got onto a fish truck that ended up in New York City on the same day that Kevin McAllister arrived. Oh, uh, my disbelief is so suspended right now. Yeah, and they keep crossing paths with Kevin on the street, so eventually Harry's like, hey, that's the kid that sent us to jail. They keep crossing paths with him? Yeah, you know how you always just kind of come York. across the same people in New York? That almost never happens. There are like 7 million people in New York. Oh, I thought there were like 200. You thought there were 200 people living in New York City? Yeah, now you're telling me 7 million. This whole thing seems pretty far-fetched. Won't this kind of be covered by the whole suspension of disbelief thing? I don't know. I have people running into each other kind of a lot. Oh, you do? Yeah, Kevin keeps running into the same crazy bird lady. Marv gets hit in the face twice by the same lady on separate occasions. How does that happen? Well, later Marv and Harry manage to grab Kevin, right? Okay. And so to escape, Kevin pinches a random lady's butt. And it turns out to be the same exact woman that Marv had sexually harassed earlier that day. Wow, what are the odds of that? Well, I thought they were one in 200. Right. Anyway, so Marv and Harry's big plan is to rob this place called Duncan's Toy Store and then fly away to an island. Pretty horrible Lovely. plan. But then Kevin decides to save Christmas by stopping them. Okay. And then he lures them Pretty to his uncle's plan. house that's undergoing renovations and he has a bunch of traps set up for them. Oh, some clever traps. Yeah, but also, you know, just throwing bricks yeah. at their faces from the roof. Oh my god. Yeah, Marv is gonna take like five bricks to the face. That's incredibly intense. It is. And then inside the house, we're gonna have a bunch of super deadly traps that defy physics. But somehow, Marv and Harry just don't die. How do they survive all that stuff? Well, we're gonna have this big reveal where you find out that Harry and Marv are actually immortal. What? Yeah, so we're gonna have this psychopath kid trying to murder these two immortal beings, but they're just not dying. I'm not sure I like the reveal of them being immortal beings. No, so what, you want Kevin to successfully kill them? No, I'd say keep all the deadly traps, just take out the reveal. But there's no way they can survive any of that without being immortal. It's exactly. literally the only explanation that makes bricks. sense. Yeah, I'm just not a fan of it. Okay. And how does the movie end? Well, Kevin's entire family is gonna fly up to see him. What happened to that whole thing about it being impossible to get plane tickets on Christmas? Well, that line was at the beginning of the movie, so I'm hoping people are gonna forget we said it. Oh, fingers <laughs> crossed. And then Kevin's dad is gonna see like a $900 hotel bill and lose his mind. Didn't he just fly 14 people across the country twice? Why is he mad about $900? So we can have this fun ending where he yells in the hotel room and Kevin hears him all the way in Central Park. The dad yells in the hotel and Kevin hears him in Central Park. Yeah, he does. No, he doesn't. Yeah, he does. That's not possible. <laughs> it's a funny ending. Get 
off my reason. back. But it doesn't make any sense. My back is where you are, and I'd love for you to vacate the premises. Okay, well, I'm at least going to try to get the Plaza <laughs> Hotel, the so premises. at the very least, the hotel will be right across from Central Park. Oh, you think you can get the Plaza Hotel? Yeah, apparently, if you give the owner a cameo, you can use any of his buildings for your movies. It's like this ego thing that he has. Wait, who owns the Plaza Hotel? <laughs> hey, guys. Oh, man. <laughs> you know what, Pitch Meeting? You've proven me wrong. And how dare you? Because that ending scene, I find myself chuckling every single time. When he finds the... I look forward to it. Kevin! He finds the bill. And he runs away. Um, <laughs> But the fact that, yes, they flew <laughs> everyone there... I mean, and maybe just he's that. just like, he set, sold all of his stocks to get there and now like another 900 bucks. Are you but kidding me? not just that. That was just the room service. That was just the food. Yeah, the, yeah. That's not even the actual like cost of hotel room. Because if you're in the plaza, like he just spent way over $900. Like, that was just yeah, I, his room uh, service. I'm trying to remember because I paid attention to that. Not I knew that part, but I paid attention to the whole bill. The last time we watched it during Christmas and I already forgot what it was. They showed it here for a second. I'm not sure I'm able to find it. But anyways, yes, the whole bill altogether was absolutely expensive. But I, there's so many things I didn't think about. The open seat, the fact that there was no plane tickets, but we all got 14 people there in the last minute. Yeah. I now, they, that. I think in one argument for that, at least for the, the film writers, you used that trope the last time. That was the main thing. Like, we couldn't all, we, I couldn't even get a flight there. It was so crazy on the holidays, yes. and she had to, like, do we want to yes. go through that again? No. Or just kind of skip it and bypass it? Yeah. The the one in 200 is hilarious that they keep running to the state. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be doing that a lot. There's <laughs> 7 million people? Uh-oh. And, like, the, who is, the producer guy, he was so upbeat, and you could just see him get more and more, like, really? 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 But, at the end of the day, still made a whole lot of money. Yep. Well... I think when you you can find plot holes in every single movie. Every movie. Like I said, what makes it good though is the overall storyline, the actors. I mean, because Home Alone is a funny movie, and mm -hmm. when you watch it, you know, like you got it in the first movie, you knew that the first one had a lot of unbelievability. So much that these guys are not gonna die. Never. They're not gonna die. I mean, really, and the Barely first have movie, a bruise. an iron to the face. A hot iron to the face. I'm sorry. You would be like, enough. And doesn't he do like paint cans and they get hit with paint cans? Paint cans. Like, uh, he steps on the nail. Oh, yeah. He, they they are cut. The, the rope from the house, the tree house is cut. Yes. And they smash into the brick wall. Yes. So you, I think you just go into these movies realizing that. Blow torch to the head. <laughs> they're not going to die. They're going to be just fine. Falling down a full flight of stairs with the ice and the snow. Oh. <laughs> I mean, the iron. But in the second one, they go crazy with that brick. It's hard to yes. watch that. If you yes. watch it on TV where they edit things out, mm -hmm. they only show the first brick. And then that's it. And it's funny because in the oh. edited version, you see the six that are even thrown behind them after that fact. Um, but in the movie, it's like six bricks that are yeah. thrown at him. You would die every single time. It's... It's absolutely crazy. And he's not mad at his partner that he keeps getting hit. I mean, come on. Come <laughs> well, on. Well, the other one's a little more grumpy, but yes. <laughs> like, he's so delirious after being hit. <laughs> and he moves out of the way and it hits him again. You do. You accept that because that's what happened in the first one. It's a great second one to watch. I enjoy the third one, even though it's a different cast, all that kind of stuff. But the second one is a great sequel. Not a perfect movie. So it was fun to watch this. I still like it. And I liked this because it brought up a lot of things I didn't think about before in the past. Let us know what you thought about our reaction to this. Let us know what you think about this pitch meeting and other pitch meetings. We've, we're probably going to finish the Home Alone and then we're looking at Mulan next. I just saw a request for The Lion King, or not a request, but a suggestion for The Lion King. That's my favorite animated movie of all time. If they're going to destroy the live action one, I'm all for it because I hated the live action one. But with all that being said, let us know what else. We have a great list going on, but always give us more to check out. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time. Goodbye.